this is a, a fairly young uh, patient, 51 uh, years of age, who presents with what was deemed to be initially surgically unresectable liver-limited metastatic colorectal cancer. Genetic testing found that uh, the patient's tumor had a mutation in the KRAS gene, uh, specifically a G12D mutation, which is one of the most common mutations observed in the KRAS gene. Uh, and mutational analysis of the BRAF gene did not identify any mutations, um, except for some uh, upper GI reflux, which is pretty common in this age group. The patient has no other comorbid illnesses, and the patient has absolutely no tumor-related symptoms, uh, and thus she was deemed to have a PS of zero. Quite appropriate for this patient to be initially treated with Folfox chemotherapy in combination with the anti-VEGF antibody bevacizumab. We now know that uh, mutational analysis of a patient's tumor is critically important uh, as it helps us to identify what kinds of therapies uh, should be selected for an individual patient. Specifically, we know that extended RAS testing will tell us whether or not, not a patient should be treated with an anti-EGFR antibody therapy, whether it be cetuximab or penetumumab, and to be used in combination with cytotoxic chemotherapy. In addition, we, we also now know that BRAF testing is also very important uh, because, again, the data would tell us that in patients whose tumors harbor BRAF mutations, they generally are not responsive to anti-EGFR antibody therapy. Uh, it's interesting that over the last couple of years, we now have a much better appreciation of the importance of the location of the primary tumor. Alan Vanuk, two years ago uh, at the ASCO uh, plenary session, provided a very interesting uh, presentation showing that the sightedness of the primary tumor not only served as a prognostic uh, indicator, but also could uh, predict what type of therapy a patient should receive. When we now look back at the literature uh, dating back to 20, even maybe 30 years ago, there's data showing that the sightedness of the primary tumor uh, impacts either on progression-free survival or overall survival of patients with metastatic colorectal cancer. And there are now probably four to five other randomized clinical trials, which I think provide further support for the importance of sightedness, both as a prognostic indicator, but also as a predictive marker. So based on all of the clinical data that has been presented or published to date, I think the data is pretty clear that in patients whose primary tumors come from the right side of the colon, those patients have a significantly worse prognosis than those patients whose primary tumors come from the left side of the colon. And in addition, as it relates to the sightedness serving as a predictive marker, it appears that in those primary tumors that come from the right side of the colon, those patients do not derive benefit from therapy with an anti-EGFR antibody, whether it be cetuximab or penetumumab. In contrast, in patients whose tumors come from the left side of the colon, those patients derive significant benefit from either cetuximab or penetumumab. Interestingly, bevacizumab, while active in patients whose tumors come from either the right or left side of the colon, their benefit seems to be also greater when the primary tumor comes from the left side of the colon. It's always been curious why there is this difference between right and left-sidedness. And in part, it may stem from the fact that the left side of the colon and the right side of the colon come from different embryologic parts. So for instance, the right side of the colon comes from the midgut, whereas the left side of the colon comes from the, uh, the hindgut. Molecular-based studies also now show that there are clearly molecular differences and biologic differences in tumors that come from the left side versus the right side of the colon. So in fact, there probably is, it probably has more to do with biology than just geographical location. 